Hey guys, good afternoon. This is uh, Samar Kijaz. I'm one of the physicians here with uh, Viva and Viva Richmond. Uh, and today we are going to talk to you about uh, fibroids. Uh, and we'll dive a little bit more into the topic here and we'll answer some questions. Okay. Dr. Hijaz, can you tell us a little bit about your background, um, specifically where you went to school and your residency, medical school, as well as any additional training that you might have? Sure, sure. So I actually went to school here in Richmond and I lived in Richmond for 15 plus years. Um, originally from Lebanon, moved to the States in 2002. Um, finished my engineering degree at VCU, did my medical school training and residency at VCU, and then did my subspecialty training at uh, Georgetown, uh, where I trained under one of the leading experts in uterine fibroid embolization, which is the procedure we'll be talking about today uh, under Dr. Spies. And then I moved to Fredericksburg, back to Richmond here to work between Fredericksburg and Richmond. Was there something specific that drew you to learning more about uterine fibroids? Yeah, so the, you know, in the nature of my specialty, I handle a lot of complex, uh, you know, patients and complex cases. Uh, I spend a lot of my time, uh, you know, biopsying cancer and dealing with, with cancer. I wanted, uh, you know, I wanted to basically deal with a different patient population at times and where I felt like instead of breaking bad news, maybe making a difference and helping uh, helping patients out and this is what drew me into women's health and uh, specifically uh, uterine fibroid embolization. Okay. Is there, beside being female, a specific demographic um, that present to you with symptoms for fibroids and uh, what types of symptoms are those? Yeah, so a typical uh, patient who presents uh, to me with fibroids is a woman uh, in her childbearing age. Uh, uh, and uh, typical symptoms are symptoms of heavy bleeding during uh, uh, her period, um, heavy feeling and bulk-like symptoms and cramping uh, usually happen during the period, but as well, uh, as well as throughout the month where the fibroids, due to their size, can, can cause this sort of mass effect or have some heavy feeling in the pelvis, so we, we, get, uh, we get those common uh, presentations. Yeah. Beside the age factor that you referenced, is there any other demographic information that a typical female patient might present then? Yes, uh, we see uh, fibroids being very common in African Americans. Uh, we see a lot of uh, a lot of patients who come not just you know uh, uh, young, but in their thirties and forties, and sometimes early fifties uh, okay. coming to us. Yeah. Okay. What has the um, journey looked like for these patients before they've made the call and come to see you at Viva? Yes. So this is this is the thing. It's a you know fibroids are a is a very common condition. Um, in fact, about sixty to seventy percent of women uh, by the time they're forty, fifty. Uh, may develop this, uh, you know, this condition, and what it is exactly, it's a, it's a benign tumor. Uh, it is not a cancer, uh, and in most cases, in most women, we don't have to do much for it. Uh, you know, most women live their lives n unknowing that they, not knowing that they have a fibroid or they have that condition. Uh, only a small percentage of uh, women present to us with symptoms, and typically they don't come to us. They, you know, they present to their primary care doctor. Uh, they're presented their OBGYN, uh, and it, we are not the first people to see them, even though we have a very effective treatment uh, for them. Uh, and the purpose of this is to kind of introduce women in our community to us as a subspecialty, uh, and to, to let them know that there are options for them, that they could come to us, and uh, they could come to us directly with their symptoms, with their complaints, and we're happy to see them. They don't have to have an MRI. They don't have to have any kind of imaging. They could come to us, talk to us, and we can we can certainly work out that condition with them alongside with their OB, uh, with their OBGYN as well. Okay. Yeah. Um, what makes uterine fibroid embolization a good alternative for someone, possibly over other procedures or surgery right. types? Right. And uh, let's just take a step back and talk a little bit more in depth about uterine uh, fibroid embolization and we'll get to answer that question. Uh, a typical patient who presents to me is presenting with this heavy menstrual bleeding, uh, with this heavy feeling and cramping. 
Uh, and those patients have seen already their primary care doctor uh, and have seen their OBGYN, uh, have been on, you know, on uh, taking some medications to try to help with their symptoms and their symptoms are not improving. Uh, typically the next step is their OBGYN will present them with more invasive uh, options, treatment options such as surgery. Um, what is surprising to me at times is that about 75% of those women who get to that stage where something needs to happen, an intervention needs to happen, the idea of having an option that is even more or less invasive than surgery is not presented to them at their OBGYN's office. And this is really the purpose of this uh, uh, video, so to introduce you guys to the subspecialty interventional radiology to us. Uh, so we can talk more about this even less invasive procedure that is just as effective as surgery. Um, so treatment options would be at that point if they're not responding to uh, medications is uh, hysterectomy to take the uterus out uh, or shave off some of the fibroids that are symptomatic and that's still a surgical procedure uh, or uterine fibroid embolization. Um, I seem to be a little biased, you know, if I, if I had a relative who is in her 30s, 40s, and uh, she has the option to choose between a surgery uh, or a minimally invasive procedure, knowing that the results are going to be just as effective with a minimally invasive procedure, I would want to choose a minimally invasive procedure. Um, I don't know that I want to deal with the prolonged recovery time uh, after a surgery. We're talking about weeks of recovery. Now, there are certainly some patients who probably will need to, uh, to go to surgery, uh, but in most patients, the urine fibroid embolization is a treatment option for them. So what should a patient expect if they come to Viva for this procedure? Okay. What do they need to do to prepare? Um, kind of how long would they be here in terms of our facility? Right, make an appointment. Uh, come to us, we're gonna spend some time, we're gonna get to know you, learn about your symptoms. Uh, I, we will order the appropriate tests. Uh, we will walk you through the process. The first time you come to us, you're gonna meet our nurse practitioner and one of our physicians. Uh, you present your symptoms, we'll, we'll present you with a plan. Uh, you know, we would need to have some imaging done, uh, such as an ultrasound or an MRI. Uh, in few cases, we may have to get a, a biopsy just to make sure that we are looking at fibroids and to make sure that there's nothing else going on. Um, typically after that, after we review the results, the lab work and the results of the MRI, uh, we will schedule uh, you for, a, um, for the procedure. The procedure is done here in clinic and that's, that's really the beauty of it is uh, everything is done in an outpatient setting um, that is more controlled. Uh, you get to come to us in the morning around 8 a.m. and you leave in the early afternoon. Uh, so there is no stay in the hospital. Uh, the whole procedure takes about 30 to 45 minutes. Um, it is done in a, in a nice facility that we have over here uh, where there's an x-ray uh, machine that helps us sort of guide you, uh, guide us through your body in order to get to the fibroids and to just basically try to shrink them. Uh, and uh, everything is done through a very, very, very tiny hole, a small tubing uh, that goes through the groin or the wrist. Uh, so by the end of the procedure, there are no major cuts. Uh, there is no major surgery. You're probably hardly going to see that, you know, tiny little cut after a couple of days. Yeah. Is this a procedure that is it's going to hurt someone? I mean, maybe you can talk a little bit about how you help yeah. with that as well. Absolutely. So the procedure itself, during the procedure, you're going to be sedated. You're going to be comfortable. The procedure itself is not painful for during the procedure and immediately after we are very, very good at controlling the pain. Uh, we do a, s a specific type of nerve block to help with the pain afterwards. Um, typically, patients um, have an experience, a little bit of cramping after the procedure. It lasts usually between two to three days. It can last up to a week, but it's not to the point where you cannot go back to work. Uh, and most, actually most of my patients will go back to work within a few days after a procedure like that. Uh, so compare that to surgery where you are down for four to five weeks, probably already spending a week in the hospital to recover from this. Um, I think I would, I would take the three, four days of uh, being, you know, just recovering at home and then going back to work. Is there a follow-up schedule at Viva then as well? Yes. What we typically do is after we send you home uh, after the procedure, 
the same day we will call you the next day to check on you and make sure you're doing well uh, you're gonna probably get annoyed with us because you're gonna receive a few phone calls from us just to check on you uh, we're gonna see you for follow-up we're gonna make sure that you're doing okay uh, we'll continue to see you for follow-up especially if your symptoms you know are, are or are not improving we'd like to kind of you know see you Typically, our follow-up is at two weeks, we see you back just to make sure that the tiny little, tiny little incision that we have in the groin or in the wrist is healing well and that you've recovered from the, uh, from the procedure itself. Once you've done this procedure, um, should a patient expect that a fibroid might come back in that area or what can they expect then yeah. for next steps? Good question. And especially if you're young and uh, you're basically, you still have hormonal activity uh, in your body, your body will continue to try to grow those fibroids. And again, remember, they are tumors, but they're benign. That's why we leave them alone. And 80, 90% of the time, we don't do anything to them. It's only in the time when they're, you know, they're, they're causing a problem. Uh, they can grow back, uh, but as you'll see when you go through this procedure, um, we can treat them again. And it's not the type of treatment or procedure that's so invasive that I don't want to go through it again. Uh, I, I think most women elect to do a follow-up treatment, and it doesn't happen very often. It's very rare that we have to treat uh, patients again, uh, but if we do, you'll see that it's a pretty straightforward procedure. What have patients shared with you as far as what their life looks like after having um, their fibroids taken care of at Viva? Yeah. Life-changing, you know, really life-changing. Uh, and this is the rewarding thing for me, is that I diagnose cancer every day uh, as a specialist. I biopsy cancer and I treat it uh, every day. It is great and refreshing to see a patient who comes to you and says, uh, you've changed my life. Uh, my quality of life has improved significantly. Um, and it's rewarding to me. And we hear that uh, on a regular basis here, which is nice. Wonderful. Right. Thank you very much for your time today. Right. And um, if a patient wants to learn more, can they give us a call at 804-486-4625? Absolutely. And if you want to learn more about fibroids, go to the SIR Society of Interventional Radiology SIR website and look up Fibroid Fix. Thank you. Mm -hmm.